people emigrated to the United States for freedom and for the dream of a better life. Once here, however, reality set in. There were language barriers, no work, disease. Many children were made homeless when parents became ill, died, or simply abandoned them. Often children were left to beg in the streets. By 1850, there were 27 orphanages in New York State. Many were funded by private concerns and run by churches. One such orphanage was St. Vincent's Orphan Asylum in Albany, funded by Colonel John McArdle, a local tavern owner and benefactor of St. Agnes Cemetery. The orphanage was run by the Sisters of Charity. Much was done to provide care and social activities for the orphans. On one fateful day, however, in September 1903, three souls were claimed. Girls, girls, please pay attention. I know you're excited about the picnic, but there's something I have to do first. Oh, please, Mama Layton. We have waited so long for you to finally take us on an outing. Can't you see this is important to her? After all Mama Layton has done for us, taking us in where we had nowhere to go. I'm sorry. It's all right, dear. It's just that it's been years and I need to pay my respects to three beautiful souls that rest here. Who are they? My friends. Mary Breen, Grace Burns, and Mary O'Brien. I haven't been able to speak of their loss, but not a day goes by that I do not think of them. How do you know them? Do tell us about them. We all met at St. Vincent's when I was just five years old. Grace and Mary Breen and I were about the same age, and we quickly bonded. My older sister and Mary O'Brien were the same age and our younger sister loved to tag along with our group when we would let her. You've never spoke of the orphanage very much. Why did you go there? You see, girls, there were many, many children at that time without a mother or a father. Some parents died of disease. Many lived in poverty and could not provide for their family. Many left in search of work never to return. And the children were left behind and found themselves at the orphanages. My father became very ill crippled and blind from rheumatoid arthritis and could not work. My mother struggled, but became so distraught that she could not provide for our family, she died in an insane asylum. There were many, many stories like mine at St. Vincent's. The nuns cared for us as best they could. We were fed and clothed, and Mr. McArdle would stop by and give us treats. Life was still hard, but we took comfort in each other and friendships blossomed. We were more than friends. We were a family. How long did you stay at St. Vincent's? Well, when the girls turned 16, we were sent to St. Joseph's Industrial School to learn a trade, one that would make us um, marriageable, mostly domestic services and seamstresses. That's how you can make us such wonderful clothes. What happened to your friends? It was a beautiful day, much like this one. We left the city in such joyous spirits as the good sisters had arranged for us to picnic and swim at Fernwood Pond right here at the cemetery. Such a wonderful place. The four of us made a makeshift raft and we tried to use it at the shallow end of the pond but there were too many people and the raft kept going aground. So we decided when no one was looking to launch our raft at the end of the pond that was blocked off as no one was there. <laughs> We sailed to the middle of the pond, not realizing how deep it was. We were all standing on the raft. Suddenly, the weight shifted and the raft flipped. None of us could swim and our clothing was made of heavy fabric and stocking and weighed us down. I remember going under. I tried to grab a part of the raft and surface briefly, but I went under again. But you lived. I prayed. I prayed for all of us. And it was as if the hand of an angel responded. I saw a shadow and took the hold of a hand that was reaching down into the water. Next thing I knew, I was on the shore. And the man who had saved me, a groundskeeper, was standing over me with the sisters trying to help. I was told later that they could not find the others until later. My friends had drowned. I was told that many people tried to help but they could not swim. 
Susie Crabby tried to nearly drown from the weight of her garments and her corset that made it difficult to breathe. And I lived. I don't know why I lived. I do. You live to teach us about how far we've come as women. We can be educated now. We can work, we can vote. You lived so that when our mama died, you could love and care for us. We're your family now. You lived to tell their story.